Hello, Disclavia fans. I um, haven't done one of these videos for a while, but I'm doing it in response to a lot of messages um, to say, what do we do after we get to the how-to number four video? I need to know how to connect my source up to the piano and make it sing. And, my, and all this is actually covered in the how-to document that I know a lot of you have. If you haven't got the how-to document, if you haven't got the catalog of 5,000 songs, just email me, john at driscoll.co.uk. Couldn't be any simpler than that. Or private message me, do whatever, and I'll send all the stuff over to you. Um, and hopefully you can uh, enjoy all this, all this music. But what we're talking about is if you look at the document if you've gone through the videos that are on John Driscoll piano on YouTube um, you would have arrived at a point where you have a WAV file and this WAV file contains not only MIDI information to power the piano but also the vocals and uh, audio side of the song so that you get this lovely mix of the real artist, the real Beatles, real Elton John, real Michael Bublé, with lovely piano accompaniment. But how do you actually connect it up? So what we're going to do is we're going to start under the piano as if this is our first time. And we're going to look at some settings that you will need to do and explain a little bit about them. But let's start with under the piano. If I arrived at your house, this is what I would, I would do. First thing is put your glasses on because I won't see a thing. And then we're going to dive under here. So this is, uh, this is an Inspire. Okay. Uh, it used to be an E3 and I upgraded it to be an Inspire. So let's get underneath. Oh, I'll put a light under here so we can see what we're doing. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the speakers now these are msp3s and most of you will have these um, so the pianos we're talking about at the moment are either uh, mark 4 disclavia um, it could be a, a mark 3 rcd so ones with a cd player in it uh, it can be an E3, it can be an Inspire, it can be a DKC850, or uh, um, whatever. But anyway, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a look at what we've got here. I've just put some Tipex um, on these controls so that you can see them more easily. The low and the high here, they're, obviously they're tone controls. So just just for now, crank them crank them both fully up okay we can come back and fine-tune all this a bit later on um, here's a fun fact tipex or some people call it whiteout I don't know. anyway if you remember the group the monkeys uh, from the 1970s the Mickey Dolenz and uh, Mikey York um, whoever he was Davy Jones etc the world's first completely manufactured um, pop band and it had this tall guy in it, always wear a stupid woolly hat, um, Mike Nesbitt. Um, he didn't need the money from the band because of what his mother did. Um, his mother invented Tipex, a whiteout. Isn't that a fun fact? Anyway, back to the speakers. So we've done that bit. Here are the two line inputs for these speakers. Um, your piano will have two of them. My other one is over there. And... Line two is almost never connected. So I've left that turned all the way down to nothing. Line one is the one that we're interested in. That's this one. And if you crank it right up and then back it off so that it's about 80%, in most cases, that'll do, all right? so. A lot of people start this uh, um, 
this project and they forget to make sure that the speakers are a connected and turned up and you're not going to hear anything if the speakers are not not on and not turned up so then under the piano we're going to go to the controller or well actually the controller's up front but um we're going to go to the io box or whatever yamaha call it today um and we are interested in these sockets and they are the omni in and out sockets some controllers like the ones on dkc 850 or the e3 or the mark 4 will also have a set um, of um, sockets that are called analog midi now for the sake of this video the analog midi in and the omni in side we're going to class them as the same if you've got a mark three controller you will only see analog midi in but these these little chaps here these are the things that are going to make the uh, piano sing and dance and give you all this wonderful music so in order to connect let's go back out your house by the way <laughs> I went on Amazon and I bought a cable. Here it is. It's uh, <coughs> dying now. Uh, it's a two meter cable. Can be any. It's a good quality cable that has these RCA plugs on each end, right and left. Very straightforward. And the first thing we're going to do is take this cable back under the piano. And we are going to put these into the, in this case, the Omni In, or in some cases, Analog MIDI In. So the inside, there and there. Look, when you're buying these cables, buy a good one. Um, cheap cables. I, I, I can spend months with a customer trying to get them to, especially if I'm 5,000 miles away, trying to get them to realize that the cable that they bought that they think is okay is actually rubbish from somewhere in darkest Peru it was made. And sometimes, sometimes these colors, the, the red and the, and the whites or the silver, sometimes they're around the wrong way. I don't know why. It's just a Chinese thing, I think. Um, so when you get going, it doesn't work. Uh, because they're around the wrong way. And, and the simple test is just to pull them out, turn them around the other way, and, and see if that cures a problem. On the other hand, other end, on the other end of this cable, where are you? Is the plug that is going to come from our source. Now, in this case, in this case, the source of the music is my laptop there it is and my laptop has on the side of it a headphone jack you can see that if you watch the other videos and you've read the how-to document by now you would know how to get something like this web file onto your desktop let me just show you what this web file is it's its properties uh, it's called me irresponsible Michael Bublé it is a WAV file it's 33.1 megs big these things are big uh, it came to me on the 14th of July 2012 thank you Andrew um, and that's kind of what it is and if if I just play it now you're going to hear two things you are going to hear the screeching horrible noise, which is going to come from the right hand channel of this stereo web file. And then you're going to hear the audio, the Michael Bublé and the backing track on this side. And when we plug this laptop into this piano, a marvelous thing is going to happen. It's going to send all the screeching MIDI noise to the keyboard. And it's going to send the audio to those speakers under the piano. So let's let's do the wrong thing first. 
let's play it. This is just nothing special. There it is. So we've got this horrible noise coming out here. And over here, we've got the audio. Marvellous, isn't it? So no iTunes, no nothing. This is simply playing a file through any media player on Earth. But what I need to do is I need to take this plug, shove it in to the headphone jack, and I'm going to start it again. Are we ready? Isn't that clever? rocket science but one thing that you do need to do is to make sure that the settings are correct now if I go over and look at um, the uh, the inspire controller now if you've got a mark for it would be that horrible PDA thing that ought to be thrown in a fire um, if you've got a, um, an e3 or an 850 then you've got a similar sort of app but if we go into this, eventually, there it is, I'll select this piano. I'm a bit slow today, but never mind. And all this stuff you can learn about, this is all Yamaha stuff, but I'm interested in going into the settings. And this will be different for an E3, an 850, it'll be different for a Mark IV, it'll be definitely different for, for a, um, a Mark III, but I'm gonna go into um, connections, and I what I'm gonna find somewhere is the audio in and out. And when I hit that, it shows me that the Omni-In volume is at the preset level, which when it comes from the factory, this is set to 64. It goes all the way up to 127 and all the way down to zero. And this is determining the volume that goes in. And from experience, just pull it all the way up to 127. You don't get numbers on this app, but on other apps you can. So we've set that to be correct because Later on, we're going to balance the audio against the piano, and that requires a bit of thinking about, because the noise that a piano makes, a grand piano makes, or an upright piano makes, depends on so many factors. Is the lid open? Is the lid closed? Have you got carpet on the floor? Have you... Loads of stuff will affect it. <clears throat> and also, the noise coming out of the speakers. I'm going to try this again, and I can assure you that the audio is going to be louder. There you go, it is considerably louder. Right. So that's kind of the end of this part. If you have um, if you have a Mark III piano with this big clunky thing that lives down here, it's got a, a floppy disk drive and a CD. I'm sorry I haven't got one, but you can look at the other videos. And If, if you look at the how-to document, everything I'm about to say is on page 13 because the Mark III is weird. You need to get to this setting and it will be called the analog MIDI. It won't say Omni because they didn't have Omnis. It will say analog MIDI in volume. And we need to get that up to 127. But when you look at the front of the controller, you can't get to it. On, on that controller, it's called the CD master volume. Okay, CD master volume. And you will not be able to get to that particular option 
unless you put any old CD in the CD drive. And thanks to my good friend Joe Linden, who worked all this out, um, I would have taken years to... Work. It's a tiny little print <clears throat> in the manual somewhere that isn't written very well. But um, you just need to know that. So if you've got a Mark III, shove a CD, any CD, into the CD drive. And then when you start going through the options on the front panel, all of this is described in the how-to document on page 13. Thank you, Joe. You will find miraculously that you can get to a setting called CD Master Volume. And when you get to that, whack it up to 127 and then you'll be at the stage that I am now. It's all these settings and all this stuff. It all sounds a bit complicated. It's not really because once it's done, it's done and it will stay done forever so i'm gonna leave you now i've got my cable we always do this cable do you know the wonderful thing about this cable it never goes wrong it never suffers from a power cut it never never suffers from wi-fi interference later on in other documents we're going to look at how we can stream the music to the piano without the cable but please 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 do the cable thing first because this will prove beyond a doubt whether it's working or it's not working so do the cable cables never ever go wrong that's why we love them so much okay i'm going to leave you now to read the how do document you can email me if you want copies of all this to john at driscoll.co.uk um, and enjoy all this wonderful music.